Um, was there a particular interview at KPFK where it clicked in your mind that it, you knew not only this is what you wanted to do, but more importantly, this you could do this? That you, suddenly you realized, wait a minute, I found something I'm good at and I can do this. No. Um, there was no specific interview. It was the telephone. It was taking calls from listeners. I was on the air, um, I don't know, three, four nights a week. And then the weekends, I did a show during the week called Looking In. And then I would do a Sunday show called Looking Out. Looking in had more to do with uh, the culture symbols of the time. Looking out had more to do with the uh, spiritual matters, Ooh. philosophical matters. Looking out had to do with the spiritual matters? Maybe it was the other way around. Yeah, yeah looking in, I would yeah, It's the old story that anybody who can remember the 60s can't yeah, exactly. possibly have lived through it. Um, talking to callers. That, opening the phones and hearing people on the phone and me talking with them mm -hmm. and having conversations with them that were real, uh, spontaneous, people I had never spoken to or met before. I had hundreds. I had thousands. I would estimate in my broadcasting career I spoke to more than 10,000 people on the radio. And I knew by the rapport that I established with a stranger who would call in in the middle of the night that this was a comfortable exchange for me that this was real and I was okay at it. I listened to them. And if they were calling me to discuss some of the most personal issues of their lives, it suggested to me that there was nobody else in their life that they could speak with. And as you can recall, that's something that I knew something about mm -hmm. from an earlier mm -hmm. time. <clears throat> Uh, so it was that more than uh, interviewing Frank Zappa or whoever it was that I was speaking to. It, it, all of that went by in a kind of... It was a whirlwind. You know, I had just started. It was uh, beginning for me. Even now, as you ask me the question, uh, I'm thinking about a time almost 40 years ago. Yeah. And, um, but it brings a smile to your face. Like oh, it, it all, it all that. brought a smile. I, I loved it, man. You know how people say, um, there are a lot of things that people say. One of them is that uh, the best time is they're living is right now. Mm -hmm. There was no place better than right now. Yeah. Not with me. Yeah. I agree. It was back then. Yeah, and I think the best that we can hope for is that there will be another back then in the future. By definition, there can never be another back then. The only thing that there can be is something that will replicate that time or surpass it. Uh, I have not found that moment yet. When I do, I will rejoice. Yeah, you and me both. You and me both. And, and, but we are lucky men that we have both had those moments, and we can identify them. It's not a linear, well, I punched the clock in at the widget factory for 40 years. You know, there are those moments of high uh, uh, drama, tragedy, exaltation, uh, wonderment that come with the life that you've led. I wake up every morning knowing that I got more than my share. Yeah, good for you. Far more than I deserved. I got back far more than I gave. Um, if I never have moments that were as high as those moments that I experienced when I began my career and when I came of age in Los Angeles, uh, that's just fine. That's just fine. Well, that's good that you're grateful and that you're you know, that's a big thing that I have been trying to learn is gratitude for, uh, you know, not only the good things, but gratitude for the bad things. Yeah. Because my enemies have taught me as much as my friends. 
there you go there you go